Good evening, dear friends. My name is Tatiana Bershakova. I represent uh, all Russian State Library for Foreign Literature, and I'm glad to welcome you on lecture dedicated to the culture and art of Syria. This lecture goes under the program uh, of the all Russian uh, campaign called uh, the Night of Art, uh, Noche Skusk which reunites uh, all the major culture, cultural institutions uh, all uh, around the country. And today I'm glad to present you our lecturer, uh, polyglot, uh, real truth seeker, and real lover of the culture of uh, his motherland, Abdul Arisk, who will tell us today uh, about the culture of Syria. Abdullah. Thank you very much, Tatiana, and welcome everybody uh, for saving the time to join uh, us on this uh, lecture. I hope uh, you will like it. Uh, this lecture will be uh, like uh, a presentation uh, with ability to uh, ask questions uh, at the end of every section uh, but as the presentation is quite long uh, i might be jumping over uh, some uh, slides uh, but we always we have the time to uh, come back so welcome you and thank you very much for uh, this the uh, the lecture is part of our effort to provide uh, some knowledge about uh, Syria, uh, about the heritage of Syria, the art and culture uh, of Syria. Many people, when they hear the word Syria or the name of the country Syria, they think only about uh, war and destruction uh, and refugees, uh, stuff like, like that. But uh, this is not Syria. Uh, Syria, we call the land of creation. Syria as a country, uh, appeared in the beginning of 20th century uh, by the agreement between the French and the British uh, colonization uh, power when they were dividing the Ottoman uh, Empire like uh, land. Uh, but Syria uh, is governed by natural borders, uh, which goes from the mountain Toros in the north which is now in the middle of Turkey, the mountain Zagros on the east, which is inside Iran, and the big one country was divided into many uh, smaller countries, uh, which is Iraq, Kuwait, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, Jordan, all this, this land was one land called uh, Syria. But today we will not be talking about the political uh, borders, uh, Today we are talking about the art and culture. Uh, when uh, I was invited to join uh, this uh, lecture uh, or to do this lecture, uh, I mentioned about the word art and uh, I received a question uh, from the organizer like, uh, can you tell us the names uh, of the uh, paintings and the name of the artist? Uh, so I raised the question, is art and culture only the paintings of famous artists? Like everybody heard about the, the Mona Lisa or the Jukanda, the work of Michelangelo, many work of uh, Raffaello, but is that all what the humanity did? For me, the art and culture can be divided into several categories. The architecture of the country, of course, the, the, the painting or the, the art uh, production, the sculptures, which is totally different aspect and different sector of the uh, art, the poetry, the music of the country, and of course, the religion, because the religion is just an idea and the idea gets reflected into the production of the nations, of the people, so if I will talk about the art and culture of a country, I can talk about 
any of those aspects. Uh, here I choose some of the uh, like locations uh, in Syria, uh, as we can see from the top corner on the right, uh, is the central mosque of Damascus. Uh, the, they call it Umayyad Mosque, though it was uh, built uh, thousands of years because many people know that the city Damascus is the oldest still inhabited capital in the world. The city is being inhabited as a capital and used as a capital over 6,000 years. The city itself is more than 10,000 years old. So the central part of uh, the city is the mosque. And in fact, this is one of the uh, main uh, landmarks or the approach of the Syrian people, because when the Syrians used to build like a city, the central part of the city was always the temple where they used to provide their prayers, their sacrifices to, to the gods. And uh, near the, the temple, they always had the theater and the market. So in every ancient city, when you see those three uh, locations in the, in the city, like the temple, theater, and market. So you should know that this city was built by the ancient Syrians. A second uh, picture, which is in the middle, uh, there are three gods reflected here on, on this one. And this is one of the uh, pictures, or not the pictures, the sculptures uh, from uh, the Palmyra. Uh, and they reflect the three main gods of Palmyra. And this uh, one of the uh, findings uh, that uh, our, uh, may his soul rest in peace, uh, Dr. Khair al-Assad, uh, refused to give the location for the terrorist. And he was beheaded uh, because of that. Let me take you to this journey uh, inside some of the part of the culture and the art of uh, Syria. Before the people start making the drawings and the paintings, they used to create what we call the cylindric uh, stamps. And here you can see it in, uh, in, in, in the picture. This is like small, tiny, like 10 centimeters to between five to 10 centimeters in, in height. And they used to make like a negative picture on those cylindric uh, like stamps. And then they used to press it on a specially prepared uh, mud. And after that, they used to fry it in the oven so it will last almost forever. And uh, those cylindric stamps, we call them cylindric stamps, but they are not only stamps because they reflect stories. They reflect uh, the myth, the achievement of the people, the beliefs, the religion, uh, some what uh, they believe uh, like uh, happened story. And they, if, if you look, I mean, we are, we are talking about like five centimeters, uh, an item and with some writings inside. So for, for that age, I mean, we are talking 5,000 years ago. I mean, this is like a nanotechnology for our today's understanding. And if you look to the, the print of those stamps, it's really high quality, very detailed. And we found thousands of those cylindric stamps in many locations all around the Syrian soil, the natural Syria. When I say Syrian soil, which is the natural Syria, which starts from the mountain Zagros up to the mountain Toros, to the sea, to the Phoenician, uh, like uh, 
cities and settlements they established all around in the Mediterranean Sea. And you can go back to, to my lectures about the, the subject uh, on the uh, library uh, uh, YouTube channel. Some of those, uh, like me, we came to encounter like the, the epic of Itana. And it's not only in a cylindric like stamp, but also as written text in the cuneiform uh, form. I will not tell you the story of uh, the epic of Itana. It's also part of the previous uh, lecture and you are welcome if we have time uh, to, to, to ask question. Uh, so if, if we look to the stamp itself, it produced the story how the eagle and the serpent, they had the agreement, then the eagle betrayed the serpent and he was uh, thrown in, uh, into the pit and all this uh, story, which is very, very uh, nice uh, and uh, knowledgeable uh, epic. Of course, uh, many of the, the epics, it was found on some of those, uh, we don't see sculptures, but it was very hard uh, art productions. And they serve as the, maybe the original or the, 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 the mother invention of the printing. Because we know that when uh, in, in Europe they invented the, the printing, that's exactly what they've done. They made like a negative and they start printing it using uh, the ink. Here, they made the negative in uh, the cylindric uh, shape and they were printing it by applying forces on the, uh, like, like a dough uh, from, from the sand uh, and then they, they, they fry it. Uh, of course, if we will go inside uh, this section, we need like, five or six uh, lectures to tell you uh, some, some stories uh, which we, we found. So please do your own research, continue uh, looking uh, and try to uh, get the knowledge because what I'm trying to do really is to show you a way that we have a lot what we don't know. We need to do a lot of research so we know uh, what we had there. Some of the stories also was what, which was found uh, is the Epic of Gilgamesh, uh, which predates uh, the uh, Iliada and the Homeros writings for like more than 1500 years. Uh, I don't want to talk about the, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, just I want you to pay attention to those pictures. And then I will raise a question, which I believe uh, will give you some uh, like uh, extra knowledge as a benefit for you. So Gilgamesh is one of the kings of the city of Uruk, like 2,800 years BC, which means like around 5,000 years ago. Another king, Sargon of Akkad, who is the believed to be the first person in recorded history, to rule over an empire. So he stand, like extended the, 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 the border of his uh, kingdom to cover the, all what it's today, uh, I mean, not today, the, the natural Syria. And all the uh, wars and the war campaign, it was reflected on uh, like uh, sculptures, steels, and inside the castles of, of, of the king. Also, please pay attention to those uh, fragments of the steel. If you search in the internet, like uh, steel of Sargon or Sargon of Akkad, you will get tens of thousands of answers. But just I want you to bring one small issue for your uh, attention. So those parts of the steel of victory of uh, Sargon, this is also uh, uh, important part of the uh, the steel 
uh, this one is held in uh, in Louvre, I believe, in, in in France, and it shows the fighters like grabbing the enemy from their uh, beard, and they show the enemy as naked. Just bear with me a while. Again, we have another king, uh, the Naram Sin, uh, with his like victory is tale, which is held in the Louvre uh, in, in, in France. And uh, he's the first uh, human king which reflected himself as a god because the, the horn hat, the hat with horns was only worn by gods. But he reflected himself, or I mean, he asked the, the sculpture to reflect him as a god and he applied to himself as a god. And in fact, that's what, um, after a while, they uh, said that the curse of Akkad is because the human claimed to be a god. And that's why the city of Akkad, where he's uh, originally from, was destroyed and they called the curse of Akkad. And there is a big uh, mythical uh, story about the curse uh, of Akkad. And again, here we look to the uh, victory's tale and it shows the king in a much bigger size than his enemy. And another issue, which I will tell you um, in a bit. The king Hammurabi, I believe everybody uh, heard the name Hammurabi. Uh, he's the first uh, king uh, we, he recorded a, a law and the stills of the law of Hammurabi was erected in every city under his control. And the people always, they referred to the still of the uh, law of Hammurabi. And he claimed that he received this law from the god Shamash. And here we see uh, Hammurabi standing in front of the god Shamash and receiving from him the tale of the law. And again, this is very uh, important uh, part of the uh, culture. Like when they reflect uh, a picture of a king, he is either like a warrior attacking or sitting on the throne. The enemy always on their kneel in front of him. But when he is in front of the God, he is standing and the God is sitting. So it's kind of respect. And this is part of the uh, culture of the Middle East, like the, the respect of the elders. Saint Harib. Saint Harib is also a very uh, famous, strong, he's the son of Sargon. And uh, he is well, uh, like, documented in the Old Testament uh, because he is the one who, like, took over the whole territory of uh, the Levant and he destroyed the city of Babylon. Uh, of course, there is a long story and you can refer to one of the lectures I have. And again, we see the, the sculpture on uh, one of the walls in, inside his uh, castle showing his enemies underneath, like begging uh, for, for him, and he is sitting uh, on the throne. Another uh, like uh, wall, uh, it's not a picture, it's, it's a wall sculpture, because the, the, the walls on, on, the, on the castles, they used to be covered with uh, such an artworks, and it is very detailed. I mean, if we can zoom in, or if uh, you can zoom in, you would see the, the, the details, like even the beard, they, they show like the, the hair, uh, the eyes, the fingers on the hands, uh, on the horses, we see every, all the details are uh, included in, in, in those uh, like uh, sculptural work. Ashur Banibal is also one of the great or maybe one of the greatest uh, kings of the ancient uh, Syria. And thanks to Ashur Banibal, we know major part of the history because he had a special love for the art and he built a library 
And when that library was discovered in the city of Ninawa in Northern Iraq today, uh, they discovered like 30,000 clay tables, tablets, you know, with the writings describing the, uh, the religion, uh, the, the, the faith, because they believed in many gods, uh, the faith, the religion, the uh, economical relation with the nearby countries, the contracts they used to sign, uh, they like spot it alive on a lot of uh, activities of the humanity uh, during that period. And again, Ashur Bani Ba'al, he was also like a conqueror. He expanded uh, uh, his city. And from the findings we have in his uh, castle, we have a lot of stories which really predate the stories in the Bible. Because many people, they believe that the Bible, the Old Testament in the Bible, they are the source of the historical details. But when they start discovering uh, or and unearthing those findings in those uh, ancient cities, a lot of uh, different uh, side of the stories were like come. We have the King Zail. I will not mention about the King Zail. Uh, I will come now to the last king in, in this uh, short uh, like overview, the Nabuchaz the Nasser, the one who really uh, built the walls in uh, of the uh, Babel, Babylon. And uh, those pictures, this is in the uh, Pergamon uh, Museum in uh, Germany. Uh, this is called the Gate of Ashtar. And that's how the, the walls of the city and the entrance of the city, they looked. I mean, again, we are talking like 1,000 years BC, so which is 3,000 years ago. That's way before we have Michelangelo and Da Vinci and Raffaello making any uh, of their like uh, artworks. So here are my questions for you. We've heard about those kings. We've, see, we've seen their reflections. Gilgamesh, Sargon, Sanharib, uh, Nabuchaz Nasser, Hazael, uh, Hammurabi. What do we have in common between all those reflections of all those kings? Think for a second. And if, you, if someone has an, an answer, please unmute your uh, microphone and, and say, what do you see in common among all of those? In, in, in Russian, uh, we, we, we say the uh, Vostok de la Tonkaya. So this is like a very tiny uh, detail. I will end your uh, struggle. All the reflections of those kings, they had a long, well-treated beard. And to take care of the beard was a part of the culture. So if someone, he has like short beard, and that's how we see into this victory uh, scale. The enemies, they do not have fear. And I hope you remember the, the, that uh, part of the scale when he was holding the enemy from his beard. It's not from his neck. It's not from the head. He holds him for the beard. So the beard was considered as a major cultural part. And if you don't have a beard or your beard is not taken care of, it means you are not from the uh, high level uh, part of the society or the leaders of the uh, country. Of course, there is no written uh, proof that the defeated people or the defeated nation were forced to shave their beards or uh, like uh, do not grow their beards, but in all the reflections, and only I choose some uh, of the reflection on the wall, like uh, drawings, they are always reflected with a well-treated beard. And you can go and do your own research uh, on internet. I really advise you to, to do your own uh, research.